Hey traders from around the world, welcome to this video about candlesticks. My name is Jeremy Alexander Newsom, and I'm the resident candlestick expert on the entire internet. <laughs> well, at least I like to think so. I am a specialist in candlesticks and I do wanna teach you the language of the charts. In this video, you're gonna be learning so much about what an inside candle is, how it works, and of course, how to trade it. We're gonna use a lot of real life examples, and of course, this video is entirely for free. It will revolutionize your trading. It will help you become better at timing. You're gonna love the video. Hop in, check it out. It's entirely free. You rock. All right, traders, investors, friends, family from around the world, thanks for watching that quick intro video. This particular session, class, webinar, program, video and recording, is entitled what are inside day candles and most importantly we're also talking about not only what they are but more adequately how to use them and properly take advantage of them to make some monies in the trading this is also a request i got while i'm actually here live so everyone who's here in the trading room let me go ahead and say hi you'll be on the recording forever you'll be in internet history for the rest of time but yeah, we're here in the live day trading room right now. The interesting thing is the markets are just a little on the slower side. You actually did have a really nice bullish move into the markets, but uh, it had already happened. So right now, kind of lunchtime, it's a little bit slow. And so we said, you know what? Let's go ahead and dive in and make some educational content for the rest of the world. And we're gonna do it the way that only real life trading does it, which means this video is gonna cost you absolutely zero pennies. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into and look at some inside candles. And we're going to be looking at uh, these candles on all time frames and also, most importantly, discussing what it is that they mean, what their relevance is, and how you can take advantage of them. First and foremost, let's define what an inside day candle is. An inside day candle is a candle and movement. And I'm going to put inside day in parentheses is a candle in movement in which the total range of a second day is within the high and low of the previous day. Now, the reason I'm putting day in parentheses numerous times is because it can just be an inside candle so an inside candle is a specific type of candle it doesn't have to be on a daily chart it can be on any chart of which you are looking at five minute 15 minute and so forth bottom line as you already know every single time frame that you're looking at you are able to comprise that into a candle so it's a minute two minute five minute one minute so whatever the candle is that's the representation of time in which you are checking out. The part that should be most interesting to you in this video, and as I kind of said in the intro, this is a pattern of which has significant importance. And when you truly do master the inside candle and what I also refer to as the two day, uh, I'll put day in parentheses again, the two day pennant pattern. When you master this pattern, you can make a lot of money and that's kind of the goal of trading the stock market is to make some money so you'll be able to make some solid gainages once you really understand this and obviously it will help massively with your timing because the markets are all about timing if you don't get the timing correct the strategy is irrelevant you can have the perfect strategy but if you do it at the wrong time you're gonna lose money so we're going to talk about it here on the SPY, which is the ETF that tracks the S&P 500, as most of you know. And I'm going to take the uh, chat box and just move it out here for right now, and I'll bring you all back if you have any questions. And let's go look at some inside candles, talk about what they are, and describe their importance and their significance. So this is the one that's caught my eye and my attention the, first, the fastest, right there. So here's your inside candle. This is on a daily chart. So I would normally refer to this as an inside day candle. Here's another one right here. Uh, and again, these do happen pretty frequently. 
And just like everything else, right? Just like everything else, it doesn't work all the time. <laughs> all right? You're not going to get any strategy, any approach that's always going to work. But if you understand the sentiment behind these patterns, that is a really strong factor in your help in helping your timing. So let's talk about the candles here in purple. So the first thing to notice is I'm going to highlight for you right here the four important numbers for the day. The candle that I'm going to hover over, this July 13th, 2018 candle, you'll notice the OHLC. That stands for open, high, low, and close. This candle opened at 279.17. The high was 279.93. The high is important. The low is 278.66. Now, if you come over to this candle, the high is 279.80 and the low is 278.84, which means it is the low of this candle is higher than the low of this candle and the high of this candle is lower than the high of this candle. So this would be an inside candle, inside day. All right, so we got that definition, pretty simple. Any candle that's within the, that's totally and fully within the range of a previous candle. Why is it important? It's important because it shows a rest. It shows indecision and it gives traders the opportunity to take a breakout and determine a new short term direction. Now you're going to get to define what short term means to you. For many traders, this can be days, hours, sometimes weeks, but it is a great indication and application of, all right, if you get this inside candle, right, this two day pin pattern, when this stock gapped down the next day, so what I'm going to do now is really zoom in really zoom into this candle. The very next day, when this candle gapped down, so we close here, candle gaps down, the SPY opens lower. There were tons of people looking to go bearish on that day. Tons of people. I was actually one of them because it was gapping out of that pennant pattern, right? Out of that compression, because when you create these inside patterns, when they get, when they are formed, it creates a compression. It's pressure building. Imagine that you are there putting a hot, you know, putting some boiling water on a stove and you put the lid on. It is pressure building. And that is an important takeaway. What I'm going to do though, is I'm going to go and zoom into the five minute chart on July 17th. And it's important to know because even though I was watching it initially, for a bearish trade, here is that five, the five minute chart on that particular day. So the very first five minute candle was a bullish candle. So my thought was, all right, it's a really nice gap down. I'm going to get in bearish right here and I'm going to get in, I'm going to have my stop loss right there. And I was expecting this to happen. So, Second candle comes in, bearish candle. I'm really liking that. I'm pretty pumped. Third candle comes in, obviously doesn't look bearish, but I'm still excited about it. Fourth and fifth and sixth candle come in and I say to myself, yep, doesn't look like we're going to go bearish. So I just simply canceled the bearish trade. That easy. Just canceled it. Didn't get triggered in. Didn't lose money. No big deal. Now, when you're using the inside candle, you're still going to use all of your other sentiment that you've learned from your candlestick analysis, right? If you have a bunch of gaps or you have a bunch of candles in a row, you're still going to interpret the story and you're going to read the language of the candlesticks. Because remember, candlesticks are a language. They're the language of the charts. They're the language of sentiment. And you should be able to read them eventually as good as most of you can read this little phrase right there. Just like a lot of you can look at the English language and read the words written, you want to get that proficient with candlesticks because if you are, I mean, this is trading, you can take advantage of the movements and you can make money. 
The reason I'm bringing that up is because what you do is when this thing breaks out, you get one, two, three, four, five bullish candles in a row. And in fact, look at the volume on the fifth candle. A big bullish volume spike came in right there. And not only that, but you also had this movement on SPY. You had a white candle gapping up on a five minute chart. So the close of this candle is 278.89. The open of this candle is 278.93, which means we had a four cent retest gap on a five minute chart. So if you know that's likely going to happen, what you're already and hopefully planning for is your brain should go like this. All right, there is, well, there are five white candles in a row. I'm not in bullish because I was anticipating a bearish trade. So now I need to wait for a rest and then go with the trend after it rests. Here's what's really cool about that sentence. What's cool about this sentence is number one, it sounds like you are planning a trade in advance. Number two, it sounds like you're telling the market what you want it to do. And number three, it gives you an idea of what it is that you need to be looking for. And here's the cool part. If you say, I'll write this also down. If you say, I would like to see the stock rest. And then you get an inside candle. Guess what? Inside candle. Guess what? Who wants to guess? <laughs> Who wants to try to read my mind and guess what is going to finish that statement? Hey, Cheryl Mall is the first one to get it. Yeah, if you say, I would like to see the stock rest, right? You say that out loud. That's part of your strategy. That's part of your plan. And then you get an inside candle. Guess what? That's the rest. That's what you needed. <laughs> if you say, hey, I'd love for this thing to slow down a little bit and pause and rest, and you get an inside candle, boom, you just got the rest that you were looking for. And that's it. All you need is one. All you need is one. I love it. However that song goes, I think that's a song. And this candle right here, bring back over here, this particular candle, right, you get a retest gap after five white candles in a row, so you're not gonna go bullish right here, hopefully. And you're expecting a, a rest and a rotation. This candle, that little doji looking candle, this one right here, uh, is an inside, day, uh, inside five minute candle. I mean, it's, it's almost entirely with inside the, the range of that previous candle. So that is the rest. Now the question is, all right, Newsom, so it rests. When do I get in? You get in above the break of that inside candle. And the goal is to go with the trend, right? That is the goal. The goal is what's the trend with, it, with whatever time frame it is that you're playing. So when you get that inside candle, when you get the rest, there's numerous ways to play it. I will tell you both. Play number one is you enter above the high of the inside candle with a stop below the low of the main candle, right? The first candle, not the, not the inside candle, but the main candle. So enter above the high of the inside candle and you place your stop above or below, you know, if you're bullish or bearish, you place your stop below the low of the main candle that was, you know, the, you know the, the beginning day, the engulfing day. That's play number one. Play number two depends on how far the trade and the trend has already moved. And what I mean by that is, if you want to play the retest of the breakout, go for it. 
Meaning, if you want to wait for it to break out first, and then you go, all right, it's definitely broken out. I will now buy the retest. Where do you buy the retest? The high of the inside candle. And you place the stop below the low of the primary engulfing candle, same exact thing. And this trade, your entry would have gotten filled. And obviously that is the S curve. It's the S curve that you hear me talk about in so many classes. And in fact, I do have a video planned. I'll probably even do it uh, very soon. So if you're watching this video, search for it on YouTube. But I'm gonna dedicate a whole class just to the S curve because that is it right there. That's, that's the S curve. Now the question is, you could ask, do I need to worry about the inside candle? Could I just play the S curve? And the answer is yes, you could. But what happens is when you see the S, when you see that inside candle going with the trend, you then now know, all right, this is what I wanted to see in the first place. And it gives you that ability to time your trades because you are looking for something specific to occur. And if you tell the market, this is what I'm doing, regardless of what you're doing, this is what my plan is, and then you go do that, that's the mark of a really good trader. So if I go back to this daily example right here, you'll notice two examples. Here is the daily chart. So on this daily chart, per play number one that I just mentioned, you could have entered right here. And at this situation, most likely you would have factored in the low of the engulfing candle with the low of the other engulfing candle and your stop would have probably gone right there. That would have been play number one. So ladies and gentlemen, true or false, would play number two that I just described, would that also have worked and also have triggered? And the answer is, yeah, it would have because, right, it broke out and then it retested the high, that green line, it would have retested and filled. This particular pattern is the exact same pattern that we just looked at on the five minute chart, but on a daily time frame. It's all about fractals. Now the reason that this is important is because when I mentioned on play number two, depending on how far the trend has already moved. So if you're looking at the SPY and you see all of this and you're like, yeah, it's already moved pretty far. Instead of taking the breakout, I'll just take that retest of that inside candle and place the stop right there. That would have been a really nice toasty little trade. Now, what about when they go bearish? Okay, because here's an inside candle here in the blue arrow, and you can see that the inside candle got taken out bearish, right, against the trend. As mentioned before, when you have these inside candles, they can be really good indications of, you know, if you're day trading or swing trading, they give you good levels, good breakout levels, and good price ranges to go look for. So I want someone to type in a random stock for me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the daily chart. I'm gonna go back trade that chart really quick uh, until I just find an inside candle and then play it accordingly. All right, Tony says MU. All right, someone give me a year. Any year you want, doesn't really matter, 2017. Okay, someone give me a month. And we're just gonna go back trade it. All right, so July, let's see how I do this. July 2017. Okay, here we go. Now, what I'm going to do is just go day by day until I find an inside candle. That's really all I'm going to do. I'm not even going to look at anything else. I'm just going to go day by day until an inside day candle shapes up. And then I'm going to do my absolute best to analyze it from there. So we have a one white soldier. Boom, there's the inside day candle. That didn't take long. <laughs> all right. So now, how would we play this? What am I going to do? All right, this is the, the best, best scenario I can get. So you're gonna get in bullish above the high of the inside candle, and we're gonna be placing a stop below the low of the engulfing candle. All right, so here's the stop, and here's the entry. Bullish stop limit. The high of that candle is 30.48, so I'll make it 30.49, and stops below the inside candle. Now what's interesting about this is 
you can still analyze the sentiment of the candles. Remember, this is a letter. Imagine that this candle right here is a letter of the alphabet. You get to read this letter and try to figure out what sound is it making. Is it a B or is it the infamous X? I don't know what I mean by, with that example, but you can look at this candle and read it and say, okay, this is a relatively bullish candle. It's a, it was a gap down, it's an inside day candle, it's a bullish candle, has a little bit of a bullish body. So if Micron were to gap down and open below the low of this candle, that would probably be a pretty bearish gap. If Micron was to gap down and open below my stop of 2948, I can look at these candles and remember, you have the ability to determine what people are thinking by looking back at the chart and determine what you would have done. So if you're not in a trade and you can go back and look at a trade and go, you know what, I would have done this, but I'm not in. Doesn't matter if you're not in, you can use the analysis of, oh, I would have done this and now this is happening. So this is how that person feels. I'm going to take advantage of that move. So let's just go and find out what eventually happens on this particular trade because that would be the inside candle. Now, just as a, a, a flip the script, I'm going to change it up on you for a moment. Inside candles are also really cool when you get a gap the next day. So I'm trying to find one. Uh, here's one right here. So that's an inside candle when you had a bullish gap above. And so this, this, well, actually, no, technically the high of this candle is like two or three pennies above the high of this candle. So it's not a perfect inside candle, but it's close, right? You, you, again, the sentiment, you have a general idea. That's like if I wrote a J like this, or if I wrote a J like this, you know, and spelled something after, you go, okay, this is a J. That's what it was supposed to be. Remember, when you're looking at candlesticks, you can kind of get an idea of, oh, that's what it's supposed to be, but they just didn't, you know, it just didn't have the perfect sentiment. <laughs> so same thing with here, not a perfect inside candle, but close enough, and then you got that nice little gap and so on and so forth. All right, so let's just go forward one day and see what happens. The high of this candle, oh, this is even exciting. So this is almost another perfect inside day candle. It's very, very close but it did trigger. This candle would have triggered if you had your trigger at 3049. And we're gonna talk about this in just a second. This is actually a really, really good takeaway. Don't worry, I set everything up for a reason. Now, when you have this, this is obviously now a, a pennant pattern, right? This is a continuation pattern. The question simply becomes, do, or does the trend continue that trend? Or does the trend continue this trend? And that's the one that we do not know the answer to. But what's exciting is we can build a little bit of certainty into our trading when you're doing this type of analysis because I can look at this and go, you know what? I'm gonna find out tomorrow, most likely, if I'm gonna win or lose on this trade. Tomorrow's candle is probably gonna reveal some information to me. Wouldn't you guys agree? So let's find out. All right. So this candle, to me, looks pretty bullish. You have a nice lower shadow. You know some people hopped on bearish with a breakdown. Right, you, and you can see that. I mean, you can look at this pattern and you, you go, yeah, for sure. People definitely got in bearish with a breakdown that support. So maybe they're a little trapped and the stock did barely make a higher high and a higher low. So with this particular trade, the other thing I'm noticing is the volume increased from the previous day. So these are all things I'm going to look at. So there's no real reason at this point for it to break the low of this candle. All right. So here's the old stop. Boom, boom, boom. So you have your old stop and the new stop is going to go below the low of this candle. Now it doesn't mean it's not going to work. It just simply means if it takes out this low, there's no reason for us to be in the trade anymore. And we know that we're going to lose on trades, but what's important to keep in mind is if you can understand the sentiment of the candles and what traders are feeling, 
you will have a much better idea and timing to get into your trade. For example, if you could have looked at this trade, read the candlestick sentiment and the pattern through that run up, you could have almost certainly known that you're gonna have that nice quick S curve down and you're a buyer somewhere in here, selling somewhere up here and making money. So we've increased our stop, we're gonna lose small, we've only been in the trade two days, next candle, boom. Ladies and gentlemen, that is sexy. Pulling up a random stock, pulling up a random month, random year that you all picked, and the first inside candle pattern that I found working. Type in a seven if that's cool. Now obviously, I would love for all of these patterns to always work like this, but the important takeaway is when you practice this and you get an understanding of you can look at the candle patterns and know what the traders are feeling, you will have a much better application of your timing. And your timing is everything. Timing is key because, again, the strategies are irrelevant. So the question is, what do you now do in this particular situation? I'm going to get that, that question all the time. So, so now what? So now what? And the answer to so now what is entirely dependent on your plan and on your back testing or trading results. Here is the part of the session that wasn't really intended, but probably the most important takeaway regardless. At some point, you simply have to choose an arbitrary arbitrary amount of time to do something. Now let me explain what I mean by that. When do you move your stop? When do you lock in your profit? When, how much profit do you lock in? Here's the key, folks. You ready for this? No one knows the answers to those questions. <laughs> now, I'm not saying you don't know the answers. I'm saying literally no one knows the answers to those questions because it always changes. It's different for everyone. There is no perfect answer for when do you move your stop. There is no answer. It's an unanswerable question. It's like, what is the meaning of life? You, have, you can ask a million people the meaning of life, you're gonna get a million different answers to an extent, but everyone's gonna have around the same answer. The meaning of life is to be extraordinarily happy and make those around you happy. There's, the, there's a good answer. Is that the right answer? I don't know. Can depend on your religion, can depend on all kinds of things. So when do you move your stop? That is an answer that no one has the answer to. I'm sorry, that's a question that no one has the answer to because it is an unanswerable question perfectly. Any, any answer to that question will be right sometimes and it will be wrong sometimes. Type in a two if you agree on that. I mean, it's just, that's just the fact. You can say I move my stop a month from now, a year from now, a week from now, an hour from now. Sometimes it will be right, sometimes it will be wrong. It literally doesn't matter. What you have to do is determine what number makes sense for you, your account size, and your schedule. If you're a, you know, a mom or a dad, if you're a teacher or a firefighter, lawyer or a politician, if you're a politician, get out of here. No, I'm just kidding. Whatever you are, it depends because what is your time frame? How often are you able to be in front of the computer? How often can you move your stop? Do you have a trailing stop? You have to pick an arbitrary amount of time to do something. I can give you some of these answers to the questions. When do you move your stop? Two to six days after being in the trade. Why two to six days? Because that's about how long a, a swing trade should take for you to know if you're right or not. When do you lock in profit? When you have some to lock in, <laughs> that's a good answer to that question. So if you don't have any profit, there ain't no profit to lock in. So when you have some, lock some in. How much? Uh, pick a number. Is it one eighth? Is it one quarter? Is it all of it? And then what you do from that particular standpoint, again, you have to just pick a random amount. 
and then test it, trade it, practice it, and see how well it works for you. That is the answer. I mean, I have my own specific thing. So for me right here, I would lock out a quarter of the position. Why a quarter? Just a random arbitrary number. I just kind of picked it and kind of figured out, hey, I'm gonna try this for a while and it works. I mean, I'm not gonna exit all of it because what if it keeps going higher? Could you exit all of it? Sure. Have you, have you ever tried doing a one for one strategy where if you ever hit one R on the trade or if you ever hit one times your risk unit, you exited everything and you were really, really good at moving your stop and losing small? Have you ever tried that? Can that work well? Sure. It just depends on how good you are moving your stop and how good you are timing the candles. Because if you are a 70-30 trader and you want to, meaning you win 70% of the time, you can go for one to one. Why not? Because you're going to win 70% of the time. Why not go for one to one risk reward ratios? I mean, again, it just doesn't matter. Because <laughs> people forget once you move your stop, that makes your risk reward ratio better because your, your risk has now decreased. So once you move your stop, originally this was, let's just call it a 1% loss. Now this is like a 0.83% loss. So now your risk reward automatically comes better. Bottom line, you have to determine what it is that you're going to do and you have to stick with that. I'm going to write that down. Stick with it for three to four months. Why three to four months, Jeremy? Arbitrary number. Because as a non-scientist, so I will say that, I don't know if this is entirely true, but I think it was true when I went to middle school and I was learning about science. Because as a scientist, when you, I didn't spell because right, when you experiment with something, you have to have a control. Am I right, scientists? Can you guys give me some, some love on that one? You have to have something that doesn't change. You have, to have a, you have to have something that you go, this is what this is. This is water. And I know if I pour this chemical into my control, nothing happens. So now let me pour this into this thing and we'll find out. So you, the, the reason I say you have to have a control is if you stick with something for three to four months, that's how you can measure it. Because you gotta, you're gonna have to measure, you're gonna take measurements and you're gonna figure out, did that work or not? Just like a diet. If, did, did the diet work? <laughs> I don't know, I didn't stick to it. I didn't do the diet well. Well then, how do you know the diet doesn't work? Or a trading plan. How do you know a trading plan doesn't work if you don't have any variables and controls from which to measure? You have to have, in your plan, you must, have quantifiable data to determine if you followed your plan. And quantifiable means, I think that means numbers, like something you can look at and see. Did I stay in the trade two to six days after I got in? I mean, that's, a no, that's something that you can answer with a yes or no question, and it's quantifiable. Did I exit one quarter of my position when I was up more than 0.5 Rs between two to six days? That is a, that is a plan, a, a rule in your plan that you can quantifiably measure. Right, did you? Now, what numbers can you change? You can change all the numbers in here. You can change this number, this number, this number, and this quantity. <laughs> Everything else is just words. So did I exit an eighth, a sixteenth, a third, one thirty-second, four fifths, nine forty-eighths, right? You get to kind of determine uh, what number. And then could it be more? Could it be less? You can decide that as well. How much more? You get to pick that as well. Two to six, it could be two to six days, one to three hours, nine to 15 minutes. Type in an eight if all that makes sense. You have to have some type of quantifiable data from which you can control in a plan. Otherwise, how the heck do you know what it is that you're doing? You'll, you'll have no clue. 
So you have to have something in there. So what I will do in this situation, because usually if I go up on a trade like this, an aggressive trade, I'm gonna exit a quarter of my position. All right, so here's the quarter, quarter's gone. I'll do it towards the end of the day. And now I know it's a retest gap, so I'm gonna expect this to happen. And if we trade up to here, I'm gonna exit the rest. Again, why the rest? Because I wanna make money. I wanna lock in my trade and move on. Will it hit there? I don't know. How much longer before I move my stop? About two to six days. I'm gonna wait for another inside day candle or some other type of candle that gives me this rest. All right, so let's go forward the next day. All right. It was a retest gap. White candle gapping up, it retested. Cool. I'm gonna wait one more day. Here we go, this is the retest. I mean, I literally drew it. <laughs> I mean, the wick came down to the exact low and everything. Ah, uh, is it doing what I wanted it to do? It is. How did I know it was gonna do that? I didn't, I just drew a pink line on the screen saying, I would like for you to do this. Now, I mean, yes, I did kind of know it was gonna do that because uh, there's a lot of practice involved in this, but I know that this is a retest gap and I also know that this is a one, two, three, four, five pattern. So I'm hoping that this is the bounce. So now I'm gonna take off Mr. Squiggles. I'm going to take my stop. So the question that I now can answer is, was I in the trade two to six days? Can you guys answer that for me, yes or no? Was I in the trade between two to six days? The answer is, yes I was. I was like, okay, cool, that's a quantifiable number, I know I can answer. So now I'm gonna take up my stop, I'm gonna put it below the low of this shadow. New stop, so I'm just kinda doing this so I can show you how you would move your stop in this example. And from here, it should bounce. If it doesn't bounce, I'm gonna get trailed out for a small gain. Let's, let's see what she does. Next candle, am I out or am I in? I'm in, Newsom, you're a wizard. So what do I do now? Oh no, <laughs> I need a rule in my plan for that, right? Because I moved my stop the second time, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna wait another day because that means it's two to six days between when I move my stop. What? That's right, it can be as easy as so a random number of time when you move your stop. Two to six days, hours, minutes, you get to pick. So I'm gonna wait one more candle and then I'm gonna move my stop. Here's the next candle, whoo, doggy, inside day candle. Type in a three if we know where to put our stop because of this candle. Yeah, we know where to put our stop. We're gonna put our stop right here. And should this candle break bullish? The answer is yes. Does it have to? No. And the ironic thing is, if this does break bearish, it's gonna be a killer trade because this is a one, two, three, four, five. And this little move, this little tiny wick right here was actually a fifth wave because it went higher. And I do have a really good class on Elliott Wave, but this was a new high, so theoretically that's the fifth wave. So we could now be getting an A, B, C pattern and that could be a really, really fun bearish trade if it gaps down. I don't know if it will or gap down. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Did I get stopped out, yes or no? No, I did not. Right, so I can take this quarter off the list because I'm already out of the quarter. And now I'm gonna take the stop and I'm gonna move it to, sorry, I forgot to leave it on here. Okay, this is the old stop and this was now the old stop. So these are the all four. Is this helpful, by the way, for my newer traders to see where I would have moved my stop on each one of these candles? I'm just leaving them in the gray line because the gray line's a, a, a showing of where the red line is the new stop. So I put my new stop right below this candle. <laughs> and the next trade, boom, ladies and gentlemen. This is where I do a mic drop if I have one. What questions do I have about inside day candles for those who are here live? I'll answer those questions and then I'll go look for a bearish example of it and then I think we're gonna be done. Hopefully if you're here watching this on the YouTube channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button because this right here, folks, what you just watched is something that only I do at Real Life Trading. I don't think any other trader 
ever goes back in time and teaches from the charts in just candle by candle with nothing else on the screen. Pretty sure I'm the only one that does that. Other than obviously the traders who are here at Real Life Trading, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying this is the way to learn trading. This is it. If you're learning from a PowerPoint, unsubscribe from that guy and or girl and learn this way because PowerPoints aren't going to teach you anything. No, <laughs> I don't. I don't trade PowerPoints. I trade the market. And if I can't make money from a PowerPoint, what's the, what? Why? Okay, so you guys are all throwing in the good stuff. Gorgeous. That was a good trade, by the way. All based on an inside day candle. Nice. Very nice. Um, all right, someone give me a new stock. And thank you, by the way, folks, for all the kind words. I really appreciate it. For those who are here live. All right, Ben says Activision Blizzard. So we're going to go Activision. Someone give me a year. I'm going to go try to find a bearish trade on the year. Uh, first one in the list was 2012. All right, someone give me a month. November, November 2012, right there. All right. So now, so this is Chop City. That's the first thing I'm noticing. When I pull up the chart, we are in Chop City. Chop, Chop City. So what do I mean by Chop City? I mean, we're, look at this. This is sideways as can be. There is no trend right now. So guess who, if I do take a trade on Activision, guess who's going to be really fast about it? In and out. Boom, boom, boom. Because there's no trend. There's no reason to hold a trade going, maybe this is the time that it breaks out. Because it's sideways. And it's going to be sideways until it really does show you that it's not going to be sideways anymore. So I'm just going to zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. I already see a morning star reversal. That's a killer trade. Um, I am I am looking for <laughs> bearish inside candles, but I'm just going to draw it to see if it would work. Bullish stop limit, uh, stop loss would be right about here. I love the shave top of this candle. Really good shave top candle. I mean, the open and the high is the exact same. Tons of selling right there. So if it breaks above there, um, it'll probably be a little bit bullish. But I am going to look for some bearish trades, bearish inside candles. Uh, well, the other thing you'll notice is it's this is a little bit of a cheaper stock right now. I wish we could go back in time to 2012 and buy some shares of Activision. But you'll notice the stock's a little bit cheaper. The less expensive the stock, this should probably be an obvious no-brainer, but the easier it is to form an inside day candle, right? Because if the stock doesn't move very much, you know, you're going to get them all the time. So the average range of this stock presently is pretty minimal. So I would just throw this out there. This is not a trade that I would do with real money, whatever the trade is, whatever one we find, I wouldn't love it. Um, this is almost an inside candle, one penny away. One penny away because the low of this candle was 11.02 and the low of yesterday was 11.03. The challenge is we are already out of support. So I wouldn't go bearish with a breakdown of that support, uh, but I would buy if some people get trapped. So let's go one more candle. Woo, doggy. So we got some bears came in. So again, I said I couldn't go bearish, uh, which is true. I did not, I would not have, but we know some bulls got trapped. But again, what we can do is we can go back in time and go, man, that was almost, almost a perfect inside day candle. And it broke through some support, some volume came in. It should retest and it should roll over. So if we get a retest, right, here's where the planning begins. Here's how you can start planning trades in advance. You go, all right, if I get a retest, and if the retest is comprised of an inside day candle or two, then I will know that I can take the trade with a breakdown. And it may work and it may not. I don't know. But we know the trend is chop fast. So we're not going to be in the trade super long. It's just going to get in, get out. Maybe we're day trading. Maybe we're trading on the hourly chart, but it's uh, really, really thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hire Mr. Squiggles really quick to tell us what he thinks is going to happen on Activision Blizzard. Something like this, most likely. Now we get to see how well that works, and we're going to interpret the candles as they come 
to find out, identify if we can find a bearish inside candle and just what happens. Because this right here is costing you absolutely nothing to back trade and practice. Is that an inside day candle, ladies and gentlemen? Yes or no? And the truth shall set you free. It is. What is cool about this? If if you're if you're taking away, I mean this this video was worth millions. But if you're taking anything away from this video, take away the fact that you have the ability to look at candles, no other information, and have an idea and begin to plan on if you should take a breakout like this candle or if you should take the retest like what's happening right now. Now the question that some of you might be wondering is, are you going to get in right here and put your stop up here? Could you do that? And the answer is absolutely. That's going to come down to have you practice it. Let's do both because it's going to cost us literally nothing to find out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to extrapolate some type of data and say, okay, why did that not work? And we'll be able to use that for the future reference. But could you just simply say, all right, if you think it's going to retest, can you just go short right there? And the answer is sure you can. Absolutely. We could, we could take that trade right there. Or we could take the trade where you get in below the low of this white candle, right? Bearish stop limit. And then we would set the stop above the engulfing candle right here, which is the, the candle that the inside day candle forms from. And those would be our two trades. We'll see which one works. Because we're not going to lose anything from this trade. And then boom, huge gap up. Would have gotten, well, actually, so if you did a limit sell, you would have gotten triggered in right here. And so you would have lost, you know, and you would have gotten stopped out right there. So you would have lost on that trade. Now, here's what's really cool about that. There's multiple takeaways from this. Remember, you don't spend any money in back testing. The only thing you can do is learn from it. So put yourself in this environment as much as possible. If you rewind this tape or this video, I wish it was a tape. <laughs> if you rewind this VHS, <laughs> go back three minutes, maybe even four to five minutes, and you will hear me say when I'm looking at this uh, analysis, what will be really interesting is if it breaks down and then people get trapped. Go back and rewind it and listen to me say that because when this candle started gapping at the open of the morning, what you would have had the ability to recognize is if you are a day trader, obviously we can't day trade in this kind of platform right now, but if you were a day trader, you would be able to look at it and go, hmm, I'm looking at this chart and I see a bunch of trades break down. I bet a bunch of people shorted this retest. So if it gaps above and starts taking out some of these highs, I bet you a bunch of bearish traders are going to be trapped. They're going to be forced to buy to cover, which gives you which insight. If you're not in the trade, it can give you the insight to go bullish on a day trade because you know some people are trapped. What's another takeaway? Well, another takeaway is if you wanted to wait for the retest to occur, and then once you got the retest, you set up a particular play, like taking the breakdown after it retest, that's also something you can do. Will that work? Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. What is the biggest takeaway? Can anyone guess? You'll have to read my mind on this one. You'll have to read my mind, but we'll find out if you guys uh, can or want to. It's a scary place in there. There's one or two bigger different takeaways, and I will mention it. Don't worry. The two other big takeaways is this is why you don't trade ugly, sideways, cheap stocks. <laughs> especially on the daily chart. And especially trading them 
directionally. Now what does directionally mean? Meaning like if you're buying calls and you're buying puts or you're buying shares. You can day trade these if you want because you're day trading them. Every new day is a different day and you're buying 10 cents, you're making 10 cent moves, you're selling whatever. But this is why I don't trade, if I'm pulling up a chart and I just see pure ugliness, there's so many more to choose from. All kinds of takeaways from there. Now what I'm gonna do is just go a few more candles for it because again, I know that there are a lot of bears trapped right now. So if it starts making higher highs and higher lows, what I would like to see is this is also now a retest gap. So if we do have an inside day candle, right, and we rest and we gap up or break, that could be a good bullish move. Let's just see if that has any kind of indication. Boom, there's the retest, shocking. Wouldn't have thought that was gonna happen. And then uh, inside candle, inside candle, perfect inside candle. I love it. All right, so if you were gonna enter this trade, you could enter this trade here with a stop right there. Again, would you do this trade? Me personally, not really. Could you take the analysis from the daily chart and go, all right, I think this is what's gonna happen based on the daily, so I'll day trade it. I mean, if you're really thirsty, you're in the desert of the stock market and there are no other opportunities and you wanna trade an $11.20 stock that's just in pure chopzilla, go for it. All right, boom, there's your day trade and congratulations, you made seven cents. Not bad. All right, next, next candle. And oh, that's, oh, okay, so this is earnings. So this was earnings, so you wouldn't have been in over earnings anyway. So you've taken your trade, and you would have made, you know, peanuts. If you buy enough shares, you could have made money, but. So now you have earnings, now it's gapping down. Um, oh, this is earnings, sorry. So now you have earnings, uh, and yeah, it's just gonna keep chopping. Chopping, chopping, look at this, just all over the place. So, if you look, if you pull up a chart, oh, this this is present day, and you see something like this, and like you're just right in the thicket of the bushes, and you're in something like this. Again, there are ways to play that. You can. But I'm bad at math, but I'm not that bad. This is four and a half years. Four and a half years. So do I really want to hold shares of this company for four and a half years? Maybe. If I like the company a lot, I will. But it ain't, it ain't going to pay no bills. I don't, know, I don't know about you guys, but my water bill does not come every four and a half years. <laughs> right? So if you're owning it as an investment, like, all right, I'm going to tuck this away from my kids, you know, my kids' college fund or something. Cool. But you ain't going to be, I mean, that, that ain't going to pay any bills. Unless you're doing put sales or iron condors or some option strategy where you can take advantage of sideways movement. But even then, a good old cheap stock ain't going to have that much premium. So there's all kinds of takeaways because if you do go and you take, you take a chart, you take a trade, and you just get chopped to bits, right? The slap chop. If you're just getting slapped, chopped to bits, Lamborghini, martini, bikini, <laughs> then you can learn a few things. You can learn, all right, I hate this company. I don't want to trade this company. So going forward, you never trade that company. Or you learn when you pull up a good chart and you pull up something like this and you go, ah, yeah, I want to be in that. You know, like this is good. Like you want that, you want that. I mean, or this, yeah. That's nice, right? You're gonna have opportunities to buy the dips and you, you kind of generally know what the trend is. Or I mean, if you're playing a bearish trend, so let's go to, oh yeah, this no longer B, B, it's BHC. Bausch Health Companies. So if you're playing something like this, we know that we're in an accumulation phase on this stock. Personally, I thought it was gonna go to zero. Hasn't happened yet. They're pulling a Kobe Bryant and they're changing their jersey number, AKA their name. So, I mean, we're in an accumulation phase. We know we're going sideways. You can trade sideways moves. The good news is this is a volatile sideways stock. 
So you have opportunities to make some money while you're trading it. But even when you're trading sideways moves, that's when you normally zoom into the hourly chart and you play much more aggressive plays. So you play really aggressive moves. Um, you know, what you can do the analysis on the daily, but then you're going to zoom in and you're actually going to take some trades on the hourly and so on and so forth. Any questions for those who are here live? And again, if you're here watching either the recorded version on YouTube or you're on the reallifetrading.com website, wherever you might be, thank you for helping us with our mission. Our mission is to enrich lives. It's absolutely an honor and a privilege to have you here. And I hope this had a lot of good takeaways and good points for you to take home and use in your own personal trading. I don't expect any of you to trade like me. Everyone's going to trade differently. But what I can expect is I can teach you how to drive a car. I can teach you what a stop sign looks like. I can teach you what the brakes and the gas pedals are, how to use the rear view mirror. And from there, you're going to get to trade and drive and do whatever it is, however it is, wherever it is that you want to do. And it's going to help you uh, in incrementally. So. That's it for me. Um, thanks so much for being here. You guys are amazing. And until next time, love life, love life, and trade. Bye. Boom. We are back. Thank you for watching that entire video. That is amazing. You are truly incredible. If you liked that video, you'll probably really like this video as well. And make sure to subscribe right there because I have tons of videos just like this with absolutely zero sales pitch. My mission is to enrich lives, and I will do that by teaching people how to properly and safely invest and trade in the stock market. Shout out to my good buddy Sammy behind the camera. Folks, you're amazing. Thanks for being here. You rock. And until next time, love life, live life, and trade it. I'll see you. Bye.